So how many of you have uh, worked in NLP or are interested? No one? Okay. Any open source libraries that you have used with respect to web? Not, I mean, there are a lot of libraries in Python, I'm sure, but anyone? Okay, so next talk is going to be a very interesting one uh, because it revolves around the same topic. Uh, it's about uh, Wink NLP and uh, Sanjay will be talking about the journey of, you know, Wink NLP's open source. Uh, so I'm here to share uh, an interesting, inspiring journey to the world of open source uh, of two, primarily two people, two senior adults who are here to learn from everyone uh, because we are a newcomer to the world of open source. Uh, my name is Sanjay Saxena, and I'm the, one of the co-founders of Grape Systems. Grape Systems is actually a very tiny company consisting of just about two, or I would say a little over two people. And majority of uh, the people, which means two of them, are from the era of closed source, the era of 1980s. That's when, you know, we started our careers and, uh, you know, in that time, the entire uh, scenario was dominated by the proprietary software, closed source, secrecy was the key word. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we hardly got any exposure until, uh, say, late 2000 or so. But anyway, coming, uh, moving fast forward to 2010 when the grape was founded, uh, we, we worked on uh, several analytical and NLP related projects. Now that was 2010, which was uh, infancy for NLP and any kind of text processing kind of things. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we actually were developed uh, or, or mentored a lot of our clients in these very areas. And I'll, I'll just share a sample uh, work with you so that you get an idea as to what kind of work we did in those days. Uh, we helped the, 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 the Kisan call center in India, uh, who used to receive uh, several tens of thousands or maybe lack of queries per day from the farmers of India. And on the left, you can see, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, English and mixed language queries that used to be captured by the call center agents while they are trying to repl uh, reply to the Kisan or the former. And onto these queries, we applied a lot of NLP and analytical techniques and created a hyperlocal block level data on disease, insects, what kind of crops, etc. on a day by day temporal timeline. And one could get a, a view of every nook and corner of the country as to which month, what kind of crops are grown, what kind of insects strike are, uh, you know, crops and so on. So that is the kind of work and you could see that it was a bit of research oriented work that we were doing. And, uh, and, and, and we realized that we were almost on the bleeding edge. So we thought, uh, why not validate this very fact of uh, our uh, work and we try to, you know, uh, publish a couple of, uh, try to send our paper for publication or the work for publication to a couple of conferences and sometime in uh, mid-2010, uh, our work was presented and these two, uh, you know, very, very prestigious uh, international conferences where we talked about uh, the kind of work that we did in the area of analytics and uh, text processing or natural language processing. Uh, now, when we made this uh, presentation, that was the time this whole idea triggered in our mind that, you know, what is the point in just trying to share an outline of your work in form of a research paper? Why not consider <clears throat> open sourcing and that was the time when uh, you know one of the younger member also motivated us that you know look at it do consider uh, you know open sourcing all your work so that it's not only the 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 general outline but somebody can actually touch and feel the software and if it is useful they will probably use it 
so that was the kind of beginning of our uh, journey in the world of open source uh, and and we started uh, thinking as to how to do it and obviously in the beginning we got a very naive idea that you have a repo which is there on the github just go and make it public and it starts to become an open source software but fortunately wisdom prevailed and uh, we said that no that's not the uh, whole idea of open source open source means that when the software is available out in the open number one the end user should be able to use it easily so there has to be a good amount of a uh, user documentation to support it number two uh, if somebody wants to really uh, get deeper into the software uh, analyze it understand it improve it or maybe fix a bug uh, even the code should be well documented and if it is really going to be useful to the end community then it should also be well tested uh, so when we looked at all of these dimensions we realized no open source is not going to be a just turning a switch making a repo private to public we will have to do a lot of homework and that was one uh, anyway uh, we worked on it and and it was a journey to go through in terms of uh you know filling all the gaps that we had we focused a lot on documentation testing test coverage user documentation and finally we uh open sourced uh, a, a, a whole lot uh, of packages in quick succession these are the kind of uh, packages that we open source all of them are around nlp and some bit of machine learning and that was way back in uh 2017 uh and and uh, and all of this uh, we had developed in javascript so at that point in time this was also a very counter intuitive decision to develop nlp or uh, ml kind of packages or stats kind of a package in javascript and that's what we did and once we uh, made all of this repo public uh, again we had no idea what to do we thought now this is public and that's the end of the journey uh, and 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 we can just sit back and relax but that 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 was yet another beginning for us and we realized that uh, you know in fact that was the time we realized the beauty of open source the way the community comes and engages with you and encourages you to work harder and and we really got a great deal of appreciation is just a board that we have put together which says that how the uh, all kinds of appreciation that we receive from across the globe uh, and and when all of this was happening uh, in fact the 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 software that we had uh, released it was in agpl3 which was also a discussion at that point in time as to which license to use and so on but when we started engaging with the community and community reached out either through the show board emails etc uh one of the conversation that started to emerge was why have you licensed it under gnu under agpl uh, why not under an mit license now this was another question that uh, uh, came to us repeatedly on on several occasions through email through show boards and and at that point in time again a debate got triggered in our organization i mean basically the two people or two and a half people that we are that uh, we realized that agpl3 also kind of puts in a kind of restriction and why should you have that and the desire to open source uh, your work has to come from within it's not something that can be imposed no because i have open source you must also open source so that's the point we said no nothing doing we will switch to mit license and we switched all uh, licenses overnight to from agpl3 to mit so that was one another interesting learning that we had uh, during this process and and then sometime uh, in early 2018 and early 2018 was a time when uh, as you would know uh, word vectors were already out transformers were just invented uh, you know the today's gpt is built on transformers as you would be aware uh, and and the entire scene was dominated by uh, giants like uh, spacey or core nlp from stanford 
or natural or or compromise in JavaScript world. These are the kind of uh, uh, landscape that was there. And we took this bold step, no, we will put together an integrated NLP software. And that too in JavaScript. And, and we set out following objectives for us that A, we will make it extremely developer friendly. We will strike a balance between performance and accuracy. We had no idea what kind of performance we were talking about, but we just wanted to exceed the best in the in, 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 in the entire landscape that was available. We'll keep it lightweight and ensure that it runs on browsers, servers, low-end mobile phones, Raspberry Pi, any hardware that you can think of, it should run. And that was the objective that we set for ourselves. And, and, and we initiated the journey and, and we started. Now, when we started, uh, we thought that hopefully, uh, I mean, I'm not saying NLP is simple, but we thought, okay, we will just follow a simple route. We will pick up uh, a lot of uh, pre-annotated data or corpus as they say it and, and, uh, and use ML algorithms and train them and build a model and set up an NLP package. And that was our thought. And I thought the, the, the subsequent journey is going to be a very simple affair, I mean, provided you are able to do all of these things well. Uh, but that was not the case and that's where we were uh, actually, uh, you know, okay, sorry, so this, I, this point I missed, this was the point where when we took a decision, uh, how the community encouraged us. But anyway, moving forward, that was the point when we hit a, a very, very interesting major roadblock in the development journey. And that roadblock was something that I think a lot of people have talked about in, in previous uh, talks and presentations, was around data. How do you get data for training your models? The data, though we believe that it is available freely, but that's not the case. For example, the onto nodes, which is a major corpus even today, uh, requires you to pay 24,000 US dollars per month if you want to make it available uh, under the MIT license. So that's the cost. Or if you go to the universal dependency, which is another standard, most of the corpus are available to you or the data that you would like to to use to train your software uh, would be uh, either under non-commercial or share alike, which is again a non-MIT kind of a license. So that was a point we, it was a moment for despair for us. We had no idea how we will move forward. We almost thought of abandoning the project, but I think that was the time, uh, uh, you know, our creativity flourished and, and we took up the challenge. We said, fine, if that is not the case, we will switch to more permissive uh, data sources like WordNet in those days, uh, we, in order to circumvent the issues that uh, arise because of a large scale uh, ML model, we developed a very specialized fast FSM, which I'll just briefly describe in a moment. We sat down ourselves, just two of us or two and a half of us, and manually labeled a great deal of data, which was again a big part. We built, created a very optimal, super fast data structure, uh, which has a very small footprint. And we worked very hard on developing a declarative API to NLP, which enables uh, end user to use the tool in a very, very simple manner. We already had a tokenizer, which was a recursive tokenizer. We, we, we converted and we optimized it to a, a more performant one. I mean, largely we focused on lots of algorithms and manual labor to make sure that we are able to deliver something meaningful. And that was uh, the whole idea. So just a bit of a technical glimpse so that you understand what I'm talking of. FSM is something that I am sure most of the software people already would be aware. So we made some kind of an FSM which was much more than FSM. It, it was, just imagine if there were multiple FSMs and which are connected in a tree-like structure and they can be, can go to any depth. Uh, and, and, and on the right side, you can see a very simple example where there is a sentence which says Man Manchester United is a football club based in Manchester. And if you have a right kind of state machine, you will be able to detect that Manchester United is an organization and Manchester is a location. So that's, that's the state machine that would do. But imagine if these kind of multiple state machines are woven together in form of a tree, then they can actually do some kind of a 
magical performance in terms of uh, processing text, learning from text, doing a lot of entity recognition and so on and so forth. And, and, and the downside of it that it wasn't as good or as general purpose as uh, machine learning uh, algorithms are. And we built at that point in time a crude algorithm to, to uh, do learning. Uh, and, and, and here are again some quick examples which you can see how on the top wink NLP is able to detect such a long sequence correctly that it is money. Whereas these two examples are of a very leading uh, NLP softwares which detect either country separately, number separately or just don't read, you know. So that is the beauty that one could get as a result of an FSM. Here is an example of data structure how we collapse the, the large corpus data into a smaller uh, memory footprint stuff which you could look at. And this was the team which actually built together. These are the two and a half people on the top, which is a core team. And we were supported by community, uh, largely coming from global uh, community and some uh, family and friends. Uh, and so how did we perform on these objectives that we had set, set up? You know, one of the thing is uh, the developer friendly, where we developed a declarative API and you can get a uh, idea here, here's an example. This piece of software which you see on the top or a code is able to pull out a Wikipedia article and transform into a visual timeline like this that you can see. So you can see that it starts from a document which has read the Wikipedia article, looks at the entity, filters it on date and then for it iterates on every date, marks it up using an HTML markup and pushes it into a, a array called timeline and put, picks up the parent sentence of that entity and, and, and that's about it. I mean, you just sort it and you generate a visual uh, 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 timeline like this, right? Similarly, in terms of performance, we are able to uh, process, I mean, we've, we've been able to beat the world leaders in terms of performance and our accuracy is just about 2% less and these are the kind of uh, appreciation we have where, you know, we are almost 100x faster with 10x more data. So that's the kind of thing. This is again on the lightweight, uh, the, the entire software is just about 1500 lines of code. It runs on Node and all the browsers that you have and delivers similar performance. We have zero dependency. We have not used any software to develop it. We are battle hardened in the sense that it is certified by open uh, SSF which is a Linux Foundation uh, initiative and it has a 100% test coverage. And how the community has used it, uh, here's an example from Mayo Clinic US, which is a major uh, medical, this thing. They have a medical an annotation engine that they have built using, uh, which is a privacy uh, oriented engine for annotating medical data. Uh, IIT Delhi has used it for creating a solution for vis helping visually impaired students to learn maths. And they have used Wink NLP. Uh, this is Obsidian, which is a tool, uh, a markdown tool for taking notes. You can do graph analysis and ask these kind of questions, as you can see here. Uh, the kind of challenges that we now have, uh, where the, the key, key problem that we face uh, is how do we balance between the day job and the open source work? Because in order to survive, we take up consulting and mentoring jobs. And in our free time, we do this. And how do we fund this? The other one is the exponentially cha changing AI landscape that we are experiencing day on day. But we still believe that for a niche and compact NLP solution, there is a value. We are currently working on word vectors, which are already integrated. We are about to release it. And there are a couple of other initiatives that we are working like new language model and a learning algorithm for FSM. And that's about it. Thank you so much.